Hi, and welcome to another edition of Math Tutorials. Uh, in today's edition, we're going to take a look at hypothesis tests, a claim about a mean, and this is where the population standard deviation sigma is not known. It's going to involve a t-test, and it's section uh, 8.5 in our statistics book. The example we're going to take a look at is the following. It says, assume that a simple random sample has been selected from a normally distributed population and test the given claim. Identify the null and alternative hypotheses, test statistic, p-value, critical value, and state the final conclusion that addresses the original claim. And then here's the information. A simple random sample of 25 filtered 100 millimeter cigarettes is obtained, and the tar content of each cigarette is measured. The sample has a mean of 19.4 milligrams and a standard deviation of 3.45 milligrams. Use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the mean tar content of filtered 100 millimeter cigarettes is less than 21.1 milligrams, which is the mean for unfiltered king size cigarettes. What do the results suggest, if anything, about the effectiveness of the filters? Now, the first thing you want to do in this kind of problem is just read through the statement, that second paragraph, a couple times, and then what you really want to focus on initially is what is it actually asking you to do. In chapter 7 we were talking about confidence intervals, and it would say something like find a confidence interval estimate, and that would be the kind of language you'd see. Um, but in a hypothesis test it's usually going to say something about testing a claim. So if we look at that, we can focus over here. It says use a 0.05 significance level right there that's going to tell us we're going to be doing a hypothesis test and then we're going to test the claim that the mean mu mean is mu so that tells us we're testing a claim about a mean and test that it's less than 21.1 milligrams so the first thing you need to do in this kind of problem is set up the hypotheses that you're going to test okay so that's the beginning that's the first thing we want to do here so let's do that so we've got HO and H1 that we're going to try to figure out, okay? And notice that, again, the statement, the test that you wanted to do is test the claim that mu is less than 21.1. If you remember, HO, the null hypothesis, always has to have equals. So if this statement is mu is less than 21.1, that's got to be H1. So H1 is going to be mu is less than 21.1 milligrams and then HO has got to be equal so it's going to be mu equals 21.1 milligrams okay and then I'm going to put in parentheses over here the claim we're testing is H1 so that's step one figure out the hypotheses uh, what else are we told we're told to use a 0.05 significance level so alpha equals 0.05 and then it says we have a simple random sample of 25, so n is 25. Now notice the 100 millimeter cigarettes, that's not a statistic that comes from uh, looking at all the cigarettes, that's just the kind of cigarette it is, we don't really care. Um, so it's 25 filtered cigarettes, and then it says the sample has a mean of 19.4 milligrams and a standard deviation of 3.45. Now this is the big thing because we know that we're testing a claim about a mean. So we know it's 8.4 or 8.5. The difference between the two is the question of whether we know population deviation or sample deviation. If you know the population deviation sigma, then it's going to be a z-test 8.4. But if we know the deviation from only a sample, it's going to be a t-test. That's 8.5. So we want to look at the word standard deviation. Where does this deviation come from? Well, read that sentence very carefully. The sample has a mean of 19.4 and a standard deviation of 3.45. So that deviation is from the sample. It's s, not sigma. So we're going to have a t-test, 8.5, because the deviation is from a sample. Does that make sense? That's the, that's the key question. Where's the deviation from? If it's from the population, it's a z-test. If it's from a sample, t-test. So the sample mean is 19.4, that's x bar is the notation, and then the sample deviation, that's s, is 3.45, 
milligrams. Okay, and um, so that looks like everything we need here to do the test. And um, we're going to do this on the calculator. Uh, you could do it with the tables. There's different ways of doing this. We're going to do it on the calculator on the TI-83 or 84. So we're going to run through uh, how to do that. Okay, so now I've popped up the calculator display here. And where we want to go here is you're going to go to Stat and then you're going to go to tests and we're going to pick because it's a, sa a sample deviation we know it's a t-test so we go down and we pick t-test enter and then you have your choice here input data or stats you input the data if you had the actual measurements so like if they had the measurements of all 25 cigarettes how much tar was in each one that would be the actual data but we have the statistics we have the mean and the deviation from those 25 not the actual 25 different readings so we're gonna move over here to stats and hit enter shade that uh, mu zero that's the mean from H zero so if you look at your H zero it says mu equals 21.1 so 21.1 is what goes here X bar that's the sample mean that we had is 19.4. S is the sample deviation that was given to us is 3.45. N is the sample size. There were uh, 25. Okay, now the next line, this is basically the H1 line. And what it's asking you is, which way does the inequality go in H1? So if I look at my H1, my inequality is mu is less than 21.1. So my choices here are not equal, less than, or greater than. And I want less than. And notice it says mu zero on the left, on the right side. That's referring to that number that we called mu zero up here, 21.1. So when this says mu is not equal to 21.1, this says mu is less than 21.1, and this would say mu is greater than 21.1. We want mu is less than 21.1. So go to the middle one and hit enter to shade that choice. And there we are. Okay. So we're doing t-test, st stats, 21.1 is the mu zero, 19.4 is the sample mean, 3.45 is the sample deviation, 25 is the sample size, and less than is the direction of extreme, the inequality of H1, and then hit calculate down here. And there's a number of things here. You could get the test statistic if the problem calls for it. You could see the test statistic is negative 2.45. Here's the p-value, and it computes a few other things. To really do the problem, you, you need the p-value mainly. Uh, so I'm going to write those things down. Uh, but if we want the test statistic too, we can do that. So t equals negative 2.46 and the p value which it just calls p on the calculator is 0 0.01 and then it's 0.06 I'm going to round it to 0 0.011 okay so that's the uh, calculator part of this problem now if you remember the way you make a decision here it's you compare the p-value to the alpha that was given okay and in our case um, p-value which is 0.011 that's about one percent it's less than alpha which is five percent and a, an informal way of thinking about the p-value is the p-value measures the support for HO so a tiny p-value a p-value less than alpha it means there's no support for HO, so you reject HO. A larger p-value means that there's a, enough support for HO, and so you're going to fail to reject it. Okay, so again, a small p-value means small support for HO, reject it. So our conclusion is because the p-value is less than alpha, it's a small p, we reject HO. Okay, so we reject H O. Now to make our final conclusion and state it the proper way, uh, we can go to the book 
and there's a certain uh, page. You can go to page uh, 403. Uh, you can also go to the fold-out card that comes with the book if you have a physical copy of the book. But otherwise, page 403 tells us uh, how to word the conclusion. So here's the first question. Does the original claim contain equality? If yes, you go follow the path on the right. If no, go down. Well, remember, our original claim, which we circled over here, uh, put in parentheses, claim. Our claim was that mu is less than. It does not have equals in it. Okay, so we're going to pick no. The original claim does not contain equality, and it becomes H1. Do we reject HO? In our final conclusion, uh, based on the p-value, we did reject HO. So yes, we reject HO. And then here's what you write. The sample data support the claim that. And then you put the original claim. So we can write our final conclusion as the sample data support the claim that the mean is less than 21.1 milligrams. Okay, And then in the context of the problem, um, it was asking about the effectiveness of, of this, uh, these kinds of cigarettes on the tar level. So if you read that statement at the end again, it says the story here. A sam simple san random sample of 25 filtered cigarettes is obtained and the tar content is measured. And then they go through and they look at the mean. And the claim is that it's less than 21.1. Well, what's 21.1? It's the mean for unfiltered king size cigarettes. So what we're saying is the 21.1 is the mean for unfiltered cigarettes. And then uh, we took this sample, and this sample is is indicating to us, the data supporting, that the mean for filtered cigarettes is less than that number. So it's showing that filtered cigarettes have a lower average amount of tar. So what do the results suggest, if anything, about the effectiveness of the filters? It's suggesting that they do produce cigarettes that have a lower tar level. Okay, so this completes our tutorial on a testing hypotheses about, the, uh, about a mean and where we know S, the sample deviation, but not sigma, the population deviation.